its own legal obligations. It, 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 uh, right. I think what is being proposed is that there be a vote on the exceptions around the government's uh, If that vote uh, is carried, it is then subject to a vote on the addendum, which basically expresses the concerns of the, um, uh, of the committee on various aspects of the government's statement. Why can't we just vote on the amendment? Can I just explain what I think is my understanding yeah. for the benefit of the committee? If we, as I said before, if we don't pass the governance statement, we may dig the council into an even deeper hole yes. in terms of financial and judicial legislation. I mean, I'm assuming that if we um, don't pass it, then all sorts of financial implications will ensue in terms of credit rating, Borrowing at different rates, am I right? Possibly. Yeah, of Possibly. Yeah. And, and of course, failing to meet to not file your accounts on time will incur penalties and charges from the other road. Well done. So, um, what, what I understand is that we vote on the basis that this document came to us before that. And if we hadn't had that, we wouldn't know about it. Yes. Right? Exactly. So we vote. Ignorance in a way, but I'm using that word loosely. Mm -hmm. So we note that we don't know anything about that, yeah. and this document is correct. And then the addendum explains that after we voted on that, we've then seen that, and the addendum clarifies our position in terms of the two votes. So we vote to yeah. protect the, the council in its judicial it's and yeah. it's financial yeah. circumstances.
Um, this one is, uh, you see the recommendation, is that there was considerable report on the progress in management of the risks and that further reports on the corporate risk of register reports and future reviews of the curriculum should have all on that. My claim is going to be a sustainable report. Thank you, Jack. Um, this is the record report that was very distinct on the committee on the corporate risk register. And if you recall, the revised the new risk register was reported to the committee on the 13th of June. Uh, this is the first update that goes on that. It basically consoles uh, the position. information on the actions that we're taking to mitigate the corporate risks and our position statements from colleagues as I hear the court to run. That brings into the appendix which um, you can see before you at pages 79 to 88. That will express our team on the 16th of August um, for their consideration. Um, the report um, also talks about some potential emerging risk areas. Thank you. 
members, then, then we would all have a more interesting and satisfying experience.
So, first of all then, so this is our audit financial report for 2015-16. It, um, the reason we bring it to you and its purpose is we're required to share with you the findings and conclusions from our audit before we conclude the audit and before you take the decision to uh, approve the accounts uh, as, as Tom has just described. Um, it's part of our ongoing uh, discussions, obviously we've brought the plan to you previously. Uh, clearly the contents of this report are agreed with uh, officers as we, uh, as we progress through the audit. Um, just one thing that I wanted to sort of, sort of before I sort of cover the sort of main findings and conclusions, probably just worth uh, uh, just explaining one particular issue. Um, the report highlights that we have, have received an objection um, to the accounts this year. So um, local government electors for the uh, area um, have the right to raise objections with us. Um, so we received an objection within the statutory time frame um, and we've accepted that objection. Um, the contents of that objection relates to um, the uh, lender option, borrower option, um, lending, the property you have, the borrowing that you have in your financial statements. Um, and the, what that objection uh, asks us to do is to determine whether or not we consider that object that, that those borrowing to be unlawful, um, and to consider if, if we do, to make a, an application to the court to that effect. And secondly, that we issue a public interest report. Um, so in very simple terms, that objection has been received, we're happy that it meets the, the, the requirements to have an objection, um, and we will now continue to um, determine that objection. Um, members may be aware that that is um, what's best described as like a quasi-judicial process. Um, we have to act sort of fairly in terms of that, so I can't give you a, a lot of detail around that process. But So we've received the objection, um, we've shared, we've asked the council for certain information to help us with our initial consideration of that, and that information has come through. Um, we're now looking at that information. Um, we may then need to ask for further documentation and explanations, bless you. Um, and we may need to uh, seek further um, advice and guidance. Um, members will be aware that you're not the only council who received an objection on a similar nature to this. There are a number of others across the country. The National Audit Office that has a role here are seeking to coordinate the work that local auditors are doing on that. So hopefully it will be as joined up as possible. So we're we're, we're cooperating with that um, and obviously we'll give you an update in due course. What it does mean is um, that we cannot um, formally close the audit for this year. So we can't issue the, you know, we can issue the opinion on the accounts and the BFM conclusion, I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute. But the audit will remain open until we've determined um, that objection. Um, the sort of question that you might ask me is how long is that going to take? Um, the answer that I can give you is it'll take as long as it needs to do. As, it, as it's a sort of quasi-judicial process. Um, once we get all the information in, we share, we'll have to share that both with you as the council and with the objector so they have a chance to comment on that and then we will clearly we will seek to do that as quickly as possible. Um, so just turning then to the sort of two areas. Through you, Chair, can I just ask a couple of very quick questions? Yes. Is, is, can you name the objector? And the other question is, is it to do with interest rates? So we, what we're paying, what, when we took out the loan, interest rates, and we're paying more, is, is that the general gist of what the objection is? And can you name the objector? Thanks, Chair. Through you, Chair. Um, I think in terms of, I don't think it would be appropriate in this form for me to, to, to name the objector. Um, they've met their requirements in terms of that. Um, um, but, you know, what we have done in the Corporation Council is check and make sure it's a valid objection, so that's fine. Um, does it relate to interest rates? Um, in part it does. Um, uh, it, it relates to the interest rates payable on, these, on this borrowing and some of the other uh, uh, arrangements that go alongside that. So that, that is an element of what is involved in, in the nature of the objection. Thanks, Shane. Just a quick question. In terms of, the, the, there's a number of elements that we do during the audit. So how long will it take? I think it will take as long as it needs, as it, as it needs to, because it's a quasi-judicial process. We have to make sure that we've gone through all of the process in terms of doing that. Um, it's difficult to put a, a tight time frame on it. Um, in, in, in being your auditors, we do a number of things. We give an opinion on the financial statements, and I'll talk a little bit more on that in a minute. We give a VFM conclusion, and then the final thing we have to do is, is to issue a certificate that the audit is completed and there's no there's nothing else for us to do. Um, the advice that we've been given is that um, there's nothing that prevents us from giving the opinion or the VFM conclusion with this objection 
and being outstanding. Um, the best way to think about it is in terms of what the objection is saying is, is that this, this, this borrowing is unlawful. Um, only a court can eventually determine that this something is unlawful. Um, and there is quite a lot of, of, um, sort of legal advice and sort of legal precedents in place that says that even if you do find that, you still have a debt as a local authority. That, the nature of that debt may change, there might be some, some, some restitution between the parties involved. But in terms of, you know, um, if you're going to pay your accounts by the end of this week, by the 30 September deadline, um, you, that, those debts are valid debts for the council, and at this point in time, there's no reason why the council issue the opinion on the financial statements. So I just missed something there. You say oh, the uh, objection says borrowing is unlawful, and that can only be decided by a court. Well, we, the, the, the process that goes through is that we would have to seek a declaration. If we were persuaded by the objection, we'd have to seek a declaration in the courts that any item is contrary law. But I can't prejudge the application. Um, so we have to um, issue a conclusion 
as to does the council have appropriate arrangements in place to secure value for money in the, in the, in the use of resources. Um, our initial planning on that uh, in the year was included in our audit plan that came before in the previous meeting, identified one significant risk area around um, the difficult financial position that you and many other councils face. Um, so we've done some quite detailed work looking at um, your response to that. Um, so we've looked at the 16-17 budget savings. Um, we're happy that there is appropriate reporting uh, and monitoring of the financial position. Um, there is um, some uh, overspending in the current year. Um, but you do have a track record of delivering um, savings. Um, but recognising that going forward it is getting tougher. Um, so we were happy that those arrangements for sort of dealing with that particular issue about the, the pressure on public on, on your spending um, were in place. Clearly what we've also done now, and I know we've had a couple of conversations about this already this evening, is um, we have to be mindful of the fact that before we uh, completed our audit, um, you obviously have received the findings from the Ofsted inspection, um, and we've considered that, um, and clearly, you know, the, 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 the inspection report has a very clear judgment of inadequate, uh, and as you will know, um, highlights widespread and serious failures in the services provided to children. Um, so we have to consider what that means in terms of our value for money conclusion. So our proposal is, is that given those criticisms, it wouldn't be appropriate for to just to issue uh, an unqualified BFM conclusion. Um, so we have consulted within, within the firm about that, and our intention is to issue a qualified value for money conclusion. Um, highlighting the fact that the Austin report does, um, does highlight serious weaknesses in elements of your arrangements. Okay. So that's what we've that's what we determined in terms of that. Um, clearly, obviously that wasn't reflected in the report at the time the report came out, we still wanted the public uh, publication of that. Um, so just finally, yeah, very, very quickly, so conscious of time and share, um, what I'm asking you to do. So I'm asking you to note that, that uh, we've completed our audit now. Um, we will continue to liaise with Tom and officers around completing that audit, and we have had, um, you know, very good cooperation from officers during the audit. Um, it has been obviously quite challenging at times because of the issues that have um, uh, developed. Um, so I'm asking you to note the contents of the report, note the fact that we intend to issue an unqualified opinion, a qualified value for money conclusion, highlighting those um, weaknesses around the last have highlighted. The fact that we've got an outstanding objection, which means we can't issue the certificate, so that will, the certificate will remain open. Um, and obviously, we will report back to you as that, uh, as that progress, as, that, as we determine that objection. So, I hope that's helpful. Happy to take any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
considered by the Pensions Committee um, on the 19th of September. It summarises the findings from the work that we've completed on the financial statements for the Merseyside Pension Fund. Um, it's a very positive report. We are proposing an unqualified opinion on the financial statements and the annual report. The accounts were prepared to a very good standard, um, only some very minor <coughs> presentational amendments that were identified as a result of the audit. There are no significant matters in this report that I need to bring to your attention. Um, very quickly, I'll just highlight two small matters that are identified in the report. On page 148 of the papers, there is reference to planning in respect of one of the um, references, level three investments. These are um, often also referred to as alternative or hard to value investments, um, require a significant degree of judgment to reach the appropriate valuation. Part of our testing then looks at the um, financial statements of the individual investments and review of audit reports on those investments. So for one, we did identify a um, qualified audit opinion and two um, emphasis in matters. Those have been considered by management. Management are happy that there is no significant impact on the valuation of that investment um, and we're happy with management's conclusions, but we have um, identified a recommendation which is in the action plan to that report to improve processes for identifying and reviewing such uh, opinions. And then also, um, just very briefly on page 149 of the papers, we identified one new investment that hadn't been reported on, recorded on the investment ledger. Happy that that's an isolated incident and management have corrected that. So that was all I planned to highlight and that happened to take any questions or comments from members. Thank you, Heather.
Gesprächsgruppe.